Cancer, it's me, Stormy, and here's your horoscope for April 2018. So Cancers, just in case you are one of the people who requested it, there are now summer sessions for the Astrology 101 Basics class. We're going to study in June. All of the details are in the description box down below or at stormygrace.com. All right, Cancer. so coming into this month, we've got a lot of energy happening in Capricorn, which puts it in the seventh house, so you've got relationships on the brain you've probably had a lot of relationship interaction going on and i would think that some of these relationships are ones that you've been reevaluating in terms of what's my place what's my purpose with this relationship should i stay aligned here and that is because we've had mercury retrograde in the sign of aries lighting up the tip top of your chart that midheaven place so whether it's around career or just what is my purpose here you could definitely have found yourself trying to realign and make changes in relationships. Now, I do want to tell you, with all of the energy we have happening in this seventh house this month, um, if you're in a current relationship, this is a wonderful energy to make some moves, take some action, be assertive, grow up a little bit, take some different kind of actions here, right? Um, it's also, if you are single and you're wanting to look at a relationship, I think that it's actually a little bit stronger at the end of the month, but there's still a, a relatively open possibility for something like that to be coming to the table. So let's jump in and break this down. Now, right at the beginning of the month on the second, we see Mars and Saturn in a conjunction with each other. So sharing space, and these are two powerhouse planets, but they're here in Capricorn in that seventh house. They're actually on very good behavior, helping you do something, move something forward. Now on the fourth and the fifth, they're going to come into a square with Mercury who is retrograde. So it's like your 10th house comes into a square with your relationships. Now a square in astrology, keep this in mind, tells us, hey, I need action right now. It's not a subtle placement. It doesn't say, hey, we can solve this eventually. It says, I need action right now. So with Mercury being in this square here, this may be some conversations that are a little heated. This could be something depressing. It could also just be the kind of conversation that's heavy around your career, your purpose, what you're doing in a relationship that says, hey, you're growing up. Grow up energy is what this conversation could be about. But ultimately what it comes down to is this square gives you a sense of determination to move towards whatever the goal is and you're very well supported because just when we get here to the 14th of the month we see Jupiter who's actually over here in Scorpio in a sextile to Pluto who's here in your seventh house as well now when the planets have sex that's good for us because a sextile usually means you're going to not only have the opportunity or talent but that you will intelligently take advantage of it. You'll do something with it. And the nice part is, is that whatever is happening here in this relationship zone, it's got success behind it. You're moving towards it. You don't have to force it. It's such a delicious energy. So in any way that you are trying to reform your relationships, especially here, if you've got a new romance, you want a new romance in your life, bring it to the table. If this is a new relationship with children, because Jupiter's over there in the fifth house, Let's bring these things to the table, but you're going to have to take a more mature action in order to get there. When we get to the 15th, we see Mercury not only coming direct and out of retrograde here in Aries, but then we're sharing the space and energy of a new moon happening in Aries as well. Again, lighting up that midheaven, top of the chart. Where are you social? Where can people see you? What's the career? What's the soul level calling? What do you feel like you do on a daily basis that adds value in the world, your purpose? All of these things now have this place where you can plant these seeds of intention and move for them. Do you want a new career? Do you want a new relationship? Do you want to be known at a public level differently? This is the time to plant those seeds so that you can move and take some strong actions towards them. Aries is a let's get this done kind of energy. So this is a wonderful energy, especially around career, if you're wanting to make any changes. Now, on the 17th of the month, Saturn is going to go retrograde until September. And on the 22nd of the month, Pluto is going to go retrograde. And I have videos on both of their retrogrades, but they both go retrograde until um, September. What's great about these is that, first of all, you get a little break from Saturn, and Saturn has been heavy. Saturn has been putting 
in some work on your relationships, right? It's in your opposite energy, so that can be very intense. But what happens when they go to sleep is this is such a rewarding time. You get to look back and see where you have space to make structure. You see where you have space. You get clarity at this time. As well, when Pluto is retrograde, you have a chance to clean out old hurts. Some of you with this Mercury retrograde could have had old relationships coming back because Mercury retrograde is legit for brain bringing back old relationships, even if it's just in memory. And you may have something to clean out so that it can start fresh. Maybe that relationship gets another chance or maybe it's time to let it go so that you can move forward. Whatever it is, the relationship clean out space gets to get different. And I think the biggest relationship that gets different cancer is the relationship of you with you. You get to let go of some old beliefs, ideas, and perceptions of yourself. You do not have to have the same life that you had before. And this applies very much so as well if your cancer rising. So if that's something you feel like you're going through, then I might just be speaking your language. Now, in between these, the sun is going to move into Taurus, joining Venus over here. And this is wonderful. It's exciting. It puts some, some space, some, some harmony, some delicious into your 11th house. So now the social space has gotten a little bit more busy. Go out. Be social. Adjust your long-range plans. Allow new networking and new friends to come into your life. And you know, sometimes what happens is, is we get out, we get social, we get new places, and we meet new faces and for so many in the cancer energy there's been so much heart stuff happening over the last couple years it's kind of nice to know with the um, essence of Venus and the Sun that it's okay to get social and get back out there again even if you've already been coupled up maybe it's just time for some new friends to breathe into your life so wonderful energy right there on the 24th, Venus is going to move into Gemini. So now it's in your shadow sector. But Venus in the shadow sector is really trying to bring harmony. So this is again where I say I think it's gorgeous, delicious energy because it lets you know that you're safe to progress and to move forward, right? It's like, it's okay. You're cool. Let that go. Oh, it's okay for us to be excited about this plan or this job or this project we're working on behind the scenes so we can get ready to later launch it out. But whatever it is, Venus is going to bring a sense of beauty, comfort, and harmony to your quiet space. So if you need to have some downtime at the end of the month or you find somebody sweet and you want to hang out with them, that's a really beautiful energy to be wrapping yourselves up in. At the end of the month on the 29th, we've got the full moon happening at six degrees of Scorpio in a absolutely positive connection with a Sun and Saturn trine. So this is very good for getting things done, for cleaning out. We've got retrograde energy. We've got Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, retrograde. So we've got a lot of good clean out energy and deep cleaning out happening here. Now this is happening in your fifth house. So one of the things I'm wondering about with this full moon, since the full moon says we need to end, acknowledge, or adjust something, is if you really don't have a romance coming into your life or a new connection with children or a child trying to come into your world. Some of you, this is wonderful labor energy. Other things I'm thinking about is if you're not willing to put down maybe something you started before and you're seeing that it's not it's not as fruitful as you thought it was going to be. So don't be afraid to make some changes, change direction this month. All of these things are about what do you value? What do you feel called to? And making those adjustments so that you can have the right relationships with yourself to the world, yourself with yourself, and yourself and what you're doing out there so that you know, you know what I mean? You're getting up in the morning and you're like, yeah, I'm living my purpose. I'm living with some value. I'm not, I'm not wondering every day about if I'm wasting my skills or if I'm, I wasted that opportunity with that person, place, or thing from my past. Clean it up, get solid on it, and definitely enjoy, enjoy, enjoy your month. I look forward to seeing you next month. I hope you study with me this summer and I look forward to seeing you in $3 Thursdays as well. All right, like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye, Cancer.